welcome our blog viewers to RCD's News English Edition. As usual, we bring to you the major and top highlights of tonight. Let's follow. The President of the Republic receives a joint commission of the EGAT mechanism for the resolution of the conflict in South Sudan. Finance Minister chairs major roundtable on climate and development. And on the international scene, two new victims identified 22 years after the attacks of September. Those were the major and top highlights. Welcome back to our newsroom, our beloved viewers. In a momentous meeting held this morning at the Palace of the Republic, President Ismail Umar Gedli, who currently occupies the presidency of the Intergovernmental Authority on Development, welcomed the main officials of the IGAD monitoring mechanisms to South Sudan. It is important to remember that South Sudan went through a devastating civil war from 2013 to 2020, and the country is currently led by the Government of National Unity. This high-level meeting provided a platform to discuss the evolving situation in South Sudan, highlighting the major challenge of implementing the September 2018 peace agreement between the country's main political actors. The restoration of national police is inextricably linked to the commitment of South Sudan's political leaders to a lasting ceasefire and their willingness to collaborate with the inclusive transitional authority. Another crucial topic of the discussion was the creation of an integrated armed force for South Sudan, a central issue, and resolving the country's president problems. The high-level delegation, which was received by the IGAD chairman, included prominent figures such as IGAD Special Envoy for South Sudan, Ambassador Ismail Waiz, chairman of the Joint Commission, Monitoring and Evolution Mechanism in South Sudan, Ambassador Major General Charles Taig Yutui, and the chairman of the IGAD Monitoring and Verification Mechanism in South Sudan, the Major General Ambassador Hailu Gofba Indosa. On the Djiburian side, other leading personalities, notably the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Mr. Mahmoud Ali Yusuf, the head of the Affairs of the Republic of Djibouti to South Sudan, Mr. Hassan Robli Mahmoud, and the diplomatic advisor to the head of state, Mrs. Fatihia Jamaruddin, were also present at this crucial event. Now, let's listen to what the chairman of the IGA Joint Monitoring and Evolution Committee had to say. This commission uh, is part of the IGAD uh, requirement uh, or uh, you know, organization that deals with monitoring the peace process. As you know, South Sudan is a transition government. So I came here with the uh, ambassador, or rather the general here, so that we can be able to brief a section of the president as the chair of IGAD on the process that has been going on in the implementation of the peace agreement. Our main issues that we came to, to inform the president is about the situation of the implementation of the agreement. Now that South Sudan is going for elections in December 2024, we wanted to brief a section of the president as chair on the progress of the implementation, where we have come from, where we have, we have reached now, what are the challenges, and what now the IGAD, as a chair of IGAD, the section of the president, would uh, take over to be able to see what is now left for him to be able to to, to follow up and be able to see the final implementation and to one's election 2024. The Special Envoy of the Intergovernmental Authority on Development for the Republic of South Sudan expressed the great satisfaction of this delegation to visit Djibouti and hold a meeting with the President of the Republic, His Excellency Mr. Ismail Merkele. He pointed out that joint delegation is working to consolidate the foundation of peace and stability in South Sudan. He also stressed that the members of the delegation will return to Juba in high morale to continue the mission entrusted to them in order to bring peace and stability back to South Sudan. Today, the Ministry of Economy and Finance of Djibouti, uh, Mr. Elias Musa Dawali, chaired an important roundtable on climate and development at the Palace Kempiski Hotel. The event was enhanced by the presence of members of the government in a high-level delegation from the World Bank led by Madame Fatou Fall, resident representative, and Madame Ms. Karim Barhan, uh, Regional Director of Sustainable Development. The main objective of this historic meeting was to discuss the joint development of a National Climate and Development Report in Djibouti. This report aims to identify solutions to achieve developing goals while adapting to climate change and reducing greenhouse gas emissions. It encourages the mobilization of financial resources and private sector engagement, the request for an analysis of the impact of climate change in Djibouti and the vulnerability of the national economy to it comes from the Djiboutian government itself, thus demonstrating its commitment to the fight against climate change. Like the rest of the world, our country is celebrating International Literacy Day today. 
the event took place in the conference room of the National uh, Union of Djiburian Women. The ceremony saw the participation of the Secretary General of the UFD as well as members of the government, respectively. The Ministry of the Digital, the Ministry of Youth and Culture, the Ministry of Agriculture, and the Ministry of Social Affairs and Solidarity, and also the Ministry of Human and the Family, and the Ministry of National Education and Professional Training. Celebrated on September 8th each year, this team chosen by UNESCO is promoting literacy for world in transition, building the foundations of sustainable and peaceful societies. This commemoration is an opportunity to highlight the essential role that literacy and numeracy play in building more peaceful, just, and more sustainable societies. In his speech, the Minister of Agriculture thanked the ministers, members of parliament, and the Secretary General present who welcomed them and who bear in heart their national program for the education and literacy. The Ministry of Social Affairs expressed her assistance in participating in this meeting of values, offering thanks and appreciation to all attendees and continued saying, and I quote, I would like to take this opportunity to extend my special thanks and appreciation to the women's education and the relentless determination to enhance women's reading and writing skills. Late yesterday afternoon at Campus Key Palace, the Ministry of Energy and National Resources, accompanied by the Chairman of the Ports and Free Zones Authorities, held a major press conference. The aim of the conference was to discuss Djibouti's general policy in detail, as well as our country's overall vision in this area. It also marked an important moment in this strategic treaty, namely the integration of the Kuwait Wind Farm. During the conference, these two key figures, the Ministry of Energy and the Chairman of the Ports and Free Zones Authority, shared their perspective on the road traveled so far and on the future developments planned for this wind farm. In front of an audience of experts, government officials, and national uh, journalists, they presented a captivating uh, picture. The picture is concrete illustration of Djibouti's energy vision and of the commitment of the head of state, His Excellency Mr. Ismail Umar Ghali, to provide a source of green energy for all our citizens. To our valuable partners for their commitments and continued support. For those who have devoted their time, energy, and every step of, of the way to make things happen, thank you. We are now looking to the future. The wind farm of 60 megawatts is the first conclusive step of many more ahead on the road to the green energy transition in line with wise words of my president today. The ultimate goal for Djibouti is to produce 100% of our electricity from renewable and exhaustive sources from 2035. Moroccan rescue workers backed by foreign teams continued on Monday to race against time to find survivors and provide uh, assistance to hundreds of homeless people whose homes were flattened more than 48 hours after the earthquake that killed more than 2,100 people. Morocco announced on Sunday evening that it had responded favorably at this stage to offers from other countries. These teams have been in contact with their counterparts in Morocco with a view to coordinating the efforts, the Interior Ministry said in a statement. The Ali Sabih Prefecture, in close collaboration with the city's regional council, undertook a large city, a large scale tree planting at the rubbish cleaning campaign in the city of Ali Sabih yesterday morning, September 10. The Minister of Commerce, Mohamed Or Samadiri, was also on hand as the second vice president of the National Assembly, Omar Ahmed Waes, not, not to mention the presence in Askaville of Nivir's National Administration Executives and other individuals. The participants began collecting all kind of garbage, uh, soldiers from the Djiboutian armed forces, gendarmeries, menfop officials from the region, teachers, women, and young people from working class neighborhoods were busy cleaning up their intimate and distant neighbors.
This Saturday, September 9, saw the inauguration of the Darul Ulum Gesold Private School in the TP district of the Unity. The visionary soul behind this remarkable school is Al Hajj Elmi Gesold Irene, an outstanding merchant from Dikhil who is internationally recognized. Darul Ulum is an impressive education institution with 17 fully equipped classrooms, a six room administration building, and a separate sanitary blocks for kindergarten boys and girls. For several months now, the Ali Sibih Gendarmerie Brigade had been receiving a series of complaints about the break-ins at a dozen or so of the town's retail outlets. Investigators quickly noticed that the uh, of these burglaries were extremely similar. Today, however, justice is beginning to respond to these criminal acts. After entering the business by cutting through the tin roofs, the perpetrators stole cash from the tills, telephone, credit cards, and various electronic devices. Faced with this reoccurring series of crimes, the Gendarmerie undertook an intensive search with Philly bore fruit. As you all can see, the items that were found by the gender marriage in this intensive search. This is the hole that the thieves used to, to go in from the roof, of course. Shifting gears towards the international scene now, one man and one woman among 2,753 victims of the September 11, 2001 attacks have, have been identified thanks to their DNA. The relatives have been asked that their uh, exam be preserved exactly 22 years after the September 11 attacks on the United States. The remains of two victims killed in the World Trade Center Towers in New York have been identified by DNA as announced by authorities. Well, by this, our blood viewers, we finally conclude this edition. Thank you for being with us, and make sure to tune in later for more. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you.